Jehovah's Witnesses, a religion based on the occult and spiritism. Chapter 9, entitled, Alienating Christ, Restricted Holidays. So along with their promotion of their own brand of spiritism and occult activities, the Watchtower Society has also constructed a doctrine which has gradually diminished Jesus Christ's position over time. And although the Watchtower Society actually bans all holidays, this chapter is only going to focus on those which are Christ-based, that of Christmas and Easter. So let's take a look at our first snapshot. All right, so here we have the December 15th, 1898 Watchtower on page, I believe it's 368 on the reprints, it's page 2407. And the title of the article is, Unto You is Born a Savior. Notice what the yellow highlight has to tell us. It says, it cannot be improper in harmony with general usage for us to remember in a social way our Redeemer's birth at this time. Now remember, Watchtower uses, they, they use odd language a lot of times and weird sentence structures and sometimes their sentences are really paragraphs. So they use two negatives here in the sentence. So just like in math, two negatives make a positive. So when it says it cannot be improper, they're actually saying it's proper. It's proper to remember Jesus Christ's birth at this time, December 25th. The second yellow highlight says, In view of these things, the custom throughout Christendom of making Christmas Day a joyful one by the interchange of little tokens of love in the family and to the poor seems most appropriate. Now, the... Jehovah's Witnesses continue to teach that it was appropriate to celebrate Christmas up until the 1920s when they made this change and began teaching that Christmas was a pagan based holiday and that true Christians should not celebrate it. So according to the Watchtower Society, the world headquarters decided to discontinue di Christmas celebrations in 1926 after a staff member investigated the origins of Christmas customs. So let's take a look at what they admit in the Proclaimers book. Here we have a snapshot of the book Jehovah's Witnesses Proclaimers book. I think it was published in 1992 or something like that. But here on page 199 um, there you can see, we'll read the yellow highlight. It says, however, after further investigation of the subject, the members of the society's headquarters staff, as well as the staffs at the society's branch offices in England and in Switzerland, decided to stop sharing in Christmas festivities. So no Christmas celebrations was held there after 1926. R.H. Barber, a member of the headquarters staff who made a thorough investigation of the origin of Christmas customs and the fruitage that these were yielding presented the results in a radio broadcast. That information was also published in The Golden Age of December 12, 1928. So the witnesses have been a little bit more um, forthcoming in their celebrating of this pagan holiday, even celebrating it at their headquarters up until 1926. But the point is, in 1919, Jesus Christ, after three and a half years of investigating all the religions here on earth, he chose the Jehovah's Witnesses and he cleaned them of pagan origins. Yet, at their own headquarters, they were celebrating in a pagan custom 
um, seven more years after Jesus Christ came and selected them and cleansed his earthly organization. So something just doesn't add up right. But to be fair, we're going to go ahead and show these articles that they're discussing about in the Golden Age, December 12, 1928. So let's take a look at those. But first, here's the, uh, the next page there in the Proclaimers book. As you can see, the, the witnesses are being a little bit more clear as to what they used to celebrate, even showing a picture there on page 200. So now let's go ahead and take a look at those scans of that golden age. So here we have the December 12th, 1928 uh, golden age. That was the awake, what we know today. The article is entitled Christmas, its origin and purpose. And the next seven scans are going to have the articles so please go ahead and pause it i'll leave each one of them up for about 15 seconds and then make some comments at the end of the seven scans So I hope you had a chance to pause and read this article. It's really a piece of work. There's a lot of propaganda and personal opinions in here that are passed on to its readers as the word of God. I mean, please. They talked about the profiteering and misrepresentation, how people get drunk and overeat, have revelries, Rack up debt, stress, and anxiety. Uh, I mean, come on. I've only celebrated Christmas twice the last two years in my life for the very first time. And I didn't get drunk. I didn't overeat. I didn't rack up a lot of debt. Do some people do that? Possibly. I'm not sure. But I don't think Christmas is known for those things. Maybe Thanksgiving people might overeat and get drunk and have wild parties and stuff but I don't hear any other stories of that going on from anyone else about Christmas and as a matter of fact the best part for me celebrating Christmas was shopping for my kids and for my aunt just thinking about them what they would like what will make them happy uh, that that was kind of a euphoric experience and I really enjoyed it doing that and I'm I am I am not in no way a shopper at all but I really enjoyed doing that and I don't know go ahead and read this article it goes on to talk about how it ties back to mother's son worship again it's their jab in the stomach or um, the jab in the face to the Catholics that mother son worship and and then they go as far as saying that this mother son worship goes all the way back to the days of Nimrod Nimrod really I mean come on get out of here with this propaganda stuff and how Santa Claus is the devil 
That's what it actually says. There's a subheading about how Santa Claus is the devil. And then the Magi and their gifts. It says this. I don't know which page it was. 167, 100, 107, I think. But it says that um, it's interesting to note that the devil's messengers, these Magi, bestowed gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh on the baby Jesus. But the shepherds, God's representatives, bestowed no gifts. Well, duh. The Magi had money. They had things to give. The shepherds, they weren't expecting to give anybody gifts when Jesus was born. They were living out of doors when this happened. I mean, give me a break. It says that uh, these magi bestowed gifts, but the, re the shepherds, they didn't. All they did was go out and announce the fact that the Messiah was born, a thing which the devil's representatives did not do. I think the magi did announce that they found the person that they were looking for. But yeah, this article is just nothing but a bunch of crazy nonsense. So to be fair, I'm going to show here what the Jehovah's Witnesses currently teach their Bible students about Christmas and why they don't celebrate. So pause to read the captions here. I just want to comment on this picture. It's one of my favorite ones to use against Jehovah's Witnesses and their beliefs from where they came from. That little candy in the dirt. The caption says, would you eat a piece of candy picked up from the gutter? And we'll, we'll discuss that more on the next page. So here in the What Does the Bible Teach book on page 159, Notice it says, do origins really matter? And that first sentence of paragraph 11 says, some agree that such holidays as Christmas have pagan origins, but still feel that it is not wrong to celebrate them. After all, most people are not thinking about false worship when they observe holidays. And then paragraph 12, maybe you feel that the origins of holidays have little to do with how they feel they are celebrated today. Do origins really matter? Yes, to illustrate, suppose you saw a piece of candy lying in the gutter. Would you pick that candy up and eat it? Of course not. That candy is unclean. Like that candy, holidays may seem sweet, but they have been picked up from unclean places. Yeah, remember that candy? Why don't we apply that to Jehovah's Witnesses? Some of their ca uh, practices or candy have been picked up from unclean places like spiritism and the occult so those are definitely things that Jehovah hates so we know Jehovah's Witnesses don't like Christmas now let's move on to another holiday that they don't like and that is Easter so here we have in the book keep yourselves in God's love page 152 and we have their comments about Easter, so take a look at that. So here's a snapshot of the April 1st, 1996 Watchtower entitled Easter or the Memorial, which should you observe? Go ahead and pause it and read these next three screenshots. Basically, their witnesses are trying to tell you to celebrate the Memorial and not Easter, again, because Easter has pagan origins. The funny thing is that the witnesses do not wish to celebrate Christ's birth, but they wish to celebrate his death. And really what they're doing is, remember that scripture, Genesis 3.15, where it says the woman uh, would bruise the serpent in the head and the serpent would bruise the woman in the heel. And that's basically what the witnesses choose to celebrate that bruising of the hill where Jesus died. They don't care about his birth and they don't care about his resurrection either. So yeah, the witnesses say that Christmas and Easter 
have pagan origins. But notice what this article says. The September 22nd, 2003 Awake from the article of the Piñata, a, an ancient tradition. Notice what the black highlight says. Breaking the Piñata became a custom of the first Sunday of Lent. And we all know Lent is a Catholic pagan custom again. It seems that the beginning of the 16th century Spanish missionaries brought the piñata to Mexico. However, the missionaries may have been surprised, as were we, to find that the native people of Mexico already had a similar tradition. The Aztecs celebrated the birth of... How do you pronounce that word? I'm not even going to try and pronounce it, but here's a shot. Huitzilopochtli their god of the sun and war by placing a clay pot on a pole in this temple at the end of the year. Later, the piñata became a part of the festivities of the posadas during the Christmas season and continue as such to this day. Again, the posadas celebrated by the Catholics. The article goes on to say a star-shaped piñata is used to represent the star that guided the astrologers to Bethlehem. Breaking the piñata is also considered indispensable at birthday parties. Indeed, piñatas have become so traditionally Mexican that Mexico even exports them to other countries. We found that for many people at Mexico the piñata has lost its religious significance and is considered by most to be just harmless fun. And the last Paragraph says, when considering to you include a piñata at a social gathering, Christians should be sensitive to the consciences of others. The main concern is not what the opinions may vary. Excuse me. A main concern is not what the practice meant hundreds of years ago, but how it is viewed today in your area. Let me repeat that sentence again partly because I butchered it and partly for repetition for emphasis. A main concern is not what the practice meant hundreds of years ago, but how it is viewed today in your area. So how can Jehovah's Witnesses apply the pagan customs to Christmas and Easter, which for most people, many people, Christmas and Easter has very little significance on Christmas. Jesus Christ but for for the majority it does as well but I don't see too many people worshiping Jesus on Christmas Day they might on Easter but I don't know they seem more non-religious than anything else but how can they apply that to Christmas and Easter but cannot apply those same principles across the board to the pinata which still has not only Christmas ties but birthday ties Two things that Jehovah God really hates. And here we have a snapshot of their brochure, Jehovah's Witnesses and Education. Page 17, the yellow highlight says this. Most of the Christmas customs now prevailing in Europe or recorded from former times are not genuine Christian customs, but heathen customs which have been absorbed or tolerated by the church. So, although they can say piñatas, it doesn't matter because uh, people may not view it that way. It has cu uh, pagan customs and pagan origins. It's no doubt about that. But, of course, when it applies to Christmas, oh, well, everything is bad. So, even if the Jehovah's Witnesses took, or excuse me, if the holiday had no significance religiously of Jesus Christ or anything other. Otherwise, just it's just a time to get with your family. Kind of sort of like, I don't know, Thanksgiving? Here in America, the Jehovah's Witnesses would still not allow their members to celebrate such holidays. Especially Christmas. And here we have one more snapshot of an article about piñatas. Somebody wrote from the... Uh, from our readers talking about how the piñatas might be a conscience matter. 
what about birthdays and holidays such as Christmas? And it says, Awake responds, Christians refrain from any celebrations or customs that continue to involve false religious beliefs or activities that violate Bible principles. For example, the Bible definitely puts birthday celebrations in a bad light. However, if it is very obvious that a custom has no current false religious significance and involves no violation of Bible principles, each Christian must make a personal decision as to whether he will follow such a custom. Do not piñatas still have birthday and Christmas significance that are current? I believe so. So the, I don't know, for some reason, who knows why they decided to let piñatas be okay, but I'm not faulting them. I mean, the Jehovah's Witnesses don't have any fun, so let them have a little bit. But still, the, the main point is they're not consistent across the board. Yet the Jehovah's Witnesses have probably forgot about these scriptures, such as Luke chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. Suddenly there was an angel with a multitude of the heavenly army praising God and saying, Glory in the heights above to God, and on earth peace be among men of good will. So it's okay for the angels to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ with song and so on and so forth, but not so much for Jehovah's Witnesses. Or they forgot about this scripture in Matthew 28 verses 5 through 7. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was executed on the stake. He is not here, for he was raised up. Just as he said, come see the place where he is lying. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he was raised up from the dead. For look, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. You will see him there. Look, I have told you. So the angels commanded the women to go pronounce his resurrection, not his death. As Jehovah's Witnesses only care about the memorial. Or they may have forgot about this one, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he gave us a new birth to a living hope through the death, oh no, excuse me, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So, again, the Bible speaks of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The Jehovah's Witnesses want you to remember the death of Jesus Christ. Or perhaps they forgot about this scripture at Romans chapter 14, verse 5 and 6. One man judges one day as above another. Another judges one day the same as all others. Let each one be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who observes the day observes it to Jehovah. So, does it really matter if you celebrate holidays or not? Well, some people may think Christmas is a nice day above December 24th or December 26th. And some people believe December 25th is the same as the 24th and the 26th. We are not to be judging people. Remember that, Jehovah's Witnesses. Or lastly, they may have forgot about Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you about what you eat and drink or about the observance of a festival or of the new moon or of a Sabbath. Jehovah's Witnesses are quick to judge people who celebrate holidays, but the Bible says do not judge anyone. So anyways, this concludes the chapter. Thanks for listening. Thank you for taking time to listen to my summary of the book, Jehovah's Witnesses, a religion based upon the occult and spiritism. Post your comments, like and share this video, subscribe to my channel, and stay tuned.